G'day everyone, we're back on True Footy. I'm back in Macclesfield, returned to the Mac by the Mac, uh, and we're back once again for the Renegade Master. Uh, a bit has happened, obviously, in the last couple of days. I didn't get to do a trade update. Well, I did one two days ago, but it still feels like a lot's happened. And uh, I lost a day traveling yesterday, so now today, we're just gonna catch up on everything that's happened as of October 11th, I'm obviously uploading this in the evening, and just a little bit of a rundown of all the deals that have happened, because a lot did happen today. A lot of pick swaps, which will still have implications for other deals. It's a very interesting uh, time of the year. I love this stuff. So to kick off uh, the deals, we'll, we'll start with a couple that happened on the day that I didn't upload. Um, so there was two main ones. So James Harms has joined the Western Bulldogs for a future third round pick. That one was a little left field, I guess, in the terms of, uh, you know, we didn't know the Bulldogs were quite the front runner for James Harms until, like, basically it just happened. So uh, the Bulldogs consolidate some depth. Melbourne get another player off their books. A lot of outgoing players from the Demons this year, uh, along with some other deals now. They're three or four players down, potentially a fifth. We'll see what happens there. But uh, James Harms officially got done. The other one uh, that is quite relevant to both the trade period and the draft is that Ben Mackay did join Essendon. It's formalized now, and North Melbourne were granted pick three as compensation for a free agent leaving their club. So it's band one compensation, the absolute top level of compensation, obviously, um, which means they get a pick after their first nominal draft pick. Now, this, along with a, a few other deals, make North Melbourne a huge player in this trade period. Um, they've got their players now, which we'll get to in a minute, but also still sniffing around pick one and Harley Reid and stuff like that. And what I will say is that uh, I understand there's a lot of um, discussion at the moment about you know uh, Ben Mackay being worth pick three, but at the end of the day, that is the rule. That has been the system in place for more than 10 years now. I'd say at least 10 years. We know Ben Mackay is not really worth pick three, but that is the system that has been in place for a while. Um, you think back to 2013 and maybe 14, uh, I'm not sure if it happened in the same year, but we know that Buddy Franklin left Hawthorne to join Sydney as a free agent. I think Hawthorne's compensation was eventually pick 19. That would make sense. It's the first pick after their first pick. They won the flag that year. It must have been pick 19. Uh, similarly, Melbourne lost James Frawley to join Hawthorne because they were at the bottom of the ladder. This must have been 2014, I reckon. Because they were second last, they got band one compensation as well. That pick ended up being pick three. So James Frawley goes for pick three. Buddy Franklin goes for pick 19. It's not a perfect system, but it's designed to protect and uh, and uh, reimburse struggling clubs that lose quality players. Now, Ben Mackay is not an amazing player by any stretch, but this is kind of a case of an exploit in the system being used. I was shocked to learn that he's only played in eight wins. He's played 71 games and played in eight wins. Shocking stuff. But interesting times ahead of this upcoming, uh, well, the rest of the trade period, first of all, and then also the draft itself. So we'll move on to some other deals that got done. Taylor Adams and Brody Grundy both formally made their way to Sydney as well. For Taylor Adams, the Pies got pick 33, uh, and the Swans obviously get Taylor Adams. And then for the Grundy deal, the Pies got pick 46 and a future second for Brody Grundy. I think I think it was reported originally that the Swans offered 46 and 54 for Brody Grundy, and they were basically told where they could shove it. So they came up with a much improved offer, future second round pick for Grundy. Sydney have already got, I think, all the targets they want. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think they're on the hunt for anyone else. They've got Grundy, they've got Adams now. James Jordan, we know about, Joel Hamling as well. So we'll see, you know, props to Sydney's uh, recruiters. They've done a pretty good job of uh, negotiating all their targets this early in the trade period. They've probably got uh, a Caden Cleary, Probably in the second round of this draft as an academy bid, they're gonna match. They've probably got the points for that already. So it'd be interesting to see if Sydney shut up shop. We did see another pick swap as well involving North Melbourne and Gold Coast. Uh, this one was an interesting one. North Melbourne got a Gold Coast pick 18. Gold Coast is sort of trading down and out of this draft to accumulate points. And uh, Gold Coast received one of North Melbourne's priority picks as well. So the motivation for Gold Coast here is they get a pick in next year's draft that they can actually use because this year it's all getting absorbed by these academy picks. North Melbourne as well had a priority pick that is a subject to review at the end of next year. So they could have lost it, but now they've traded it. They've traded it into this year. They've got pick 18 and a very, very strong draft hand. In fact, as it currently stands, North Melbourne have pick two, pick three, pick 15, 17, and 18. So you could look at that and say they're gonna take five picks in the top 18. Seems more likely they're gonna come sniffing around for um, you know pick one in particular and maybe some other pick swaps as well. So in addition to that amazing draft hand, North Melbourne have got in two players in Zach Fisher and Dylan Stevens. Both of those deals have now formally happened. The last time I reported in this, I think there was a rejected deal by Carlton, uh, but either way it's happened now. So North got Fisher and pick 17 this year. Uh, the Blues got pick 21 and 25, and it does look like like 
The Blues might only use two picks in this year's draft unless they're going to do something funky. But they've got 21, 25, and 69 as their next pick. Just as an aside as well, I read somewhere that they're expecting this draft to only go 45 picks deep, which is insane. And, and that's why you're seeing clubs clamor for um, spots up the order because picks after about 45 in this year's draft might not, might not really be used. So it's going to be, it's, it's created this weird marketplace. I think John Ralph also reported Melbourne's looking at only taking two picks. You know, at the start of this trade period, they had five in the top 37 or something like that. But it's created this weird marketplace as well and uh, some opportunities to move up the order. And that's what the benefit of the academy system is as well. The one thing we probably do like about it is that you can, you know, trade shitty picks to get good picks and it's exciting for your team. Then in the other deal where uh, North got Dylan Stevens, uh, it was Stevens and pick 25 went to North Melbourne. Uh, the Swans got pick 44 in this year's draft, which they now hold and will probably use to match that Caden Cleary bid wherever it comes. And North Melbourne's other future priority pick, and North Melbourne's other future priority pick is now with the Swans. So there's two sides that currently hold their priority picks it is Sydney and Gold Coast to summarize. Then we saw another Gold Coast pick swap. They've been doing some mad business this off season already uh, where the Demons, this is a really interesting one. The Demons traded 14, 27 and 35 to move up three spots to pick 11. And uh, sorry, I stand corrected. It's actually Callum Toomey who reported that Demons are only looking at taking two picks. And they're still probably going to have a Hail Mary at pick one, he reckons. So the Demons currently hold a six and 11. And uh, Toomey suggests that if their future first round pick gets added to it, that could make a compelling bid for pick one and Harley Reid. But yeah, the interesting aspect about this is the Demons, you know, unwilling to really hold on to 27 and 35, not, not placing value in those picks, suggests there isn't a strong value placed on this year's draft in the second round and beyond. So those are the deals that have formally gotten done, uh, but there's a little bit bubbling away with potential future deals. So first of all, Adelaide is still going really hard at Harrison Petty. This won't really go away. It started off as a bit of a cheeky, oh, what are the odds we get Petty if uh, if we give you McAdam and, and Melbourne shut that down? But they've been going pretty hard and it's been a reported as well by Tom Morris that uh, Harrison Petty is actually pretty open to a potential move to the Adelaide Crows. So this one might actually have some legs, particularly if the player is motivated and starts to say, hey, let's try and get a deal done. Petty's contracted for another couple of years worth, you know, a fair bit more than Shane McAdam, you'd say. Uh, I think it looks like the D's are probably, probably rating Petty as a potential forward. I think he kicked a big bag towards the end of the year, didn't he? And uh, the Crows obviously need to keep back. So Petty is South Australian, or at least he went to boarding school in Adelaide. I think that's that was the story. Crows hold pick nine at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. That's probably what it's going to cost to shake him loose, to be honest, if he's contracted and really highly rated by the Demons. You know, does pick nine get thrown into the mix? Um, does that then help Melbourne get Harley Reid. There's so much to play out here and it's very juicy. Just on Harley Reid, I almost want to do a video in itself uh, on this topic because it's a little bit bubbling away. However, I will give a little bit of a tidbit that West Coast apparently formally off, uh, asked for pick two and three for pick one, which is obviously, you know, that's a big ask and, and North Melbourne understandably declined that as you'd think they would. Uh, interestingly though, North Melbourne's offer for pick one was 15, 18, 21 and an end of first next year. Uh, I think that is now obsolete because I've traded that end of first, but you know, Two late firsts and two early seconds was the offer for pick one, which I think uh, it's laughable. So both of these clubs, you know, a fair way apart on a potential deal, um, but we'll see what happens. Obviously, there's still some pick swaps happening and North Hands improved since that was reported. The Lockie Shields deal uh, continues to still sort of bubble away. I reckon there's going to be some genuine negotiations this year. Uh, Collingwood currently hold pick 19. What do they get? Uh, 33 for Taylor Adams. I would have thought 19 is probably a minimum. Uh, Fremantle do drive a hard bargain at these sort of deals for contracted players, and they have a recent history of getting what they want for these players as well and turning bad situations into good ones. Pick 19 might not be enough, but I think it's probably about right for his value. I do rate Lucky Shules. You know, uh, Taylor Adams gets pushed out. Collingwood probably optimizing their best 22 here. You know, Adams couldn't quite get... On the midfield rotation, and interestingly, it's also been reported by John Ralph this time. It was John Ralph who suggested that the Adams move was actually initiated by the Adams party, the Adams family, as it were, during the prelim and the grand final. So Taylor Adams was actually the one that initiated that move, probably for more midfield minutes. I'm not too sure, but it's interesting that Sydney weren't actually the ones to uh, initiate that deal. But anyway, Lockheed Shaws comes in, probably plays that half forward role that Adams probably didn't want to play. Uh, it's it's a good way of optimizing their best 22. I, I'd say pick 19 is going to be involved in this deal. A couple of other tidbits before we finish up. Uh, Tom Morris reported that uh, there's still no clear front runner for someone like Jack Billings, who it does seem like 
uh, is going to leave the club. He's heard Melbourne, which is an interesting one. That's the first time I've heard uh, Melbourne associated with Jack Billings. We're talking about, you know, Melbourne are losing a lot of players this offseason. So Harms, Jordan, Grundy. We know McAdams coming in. Could they lose Petty? Possibly. Only want to take two spots. You know, I feel like a trade in makes sense. And Jack Billings, they're going to have to uh, absorb some salary cap for that. I think he's paid a million over the next two years. I think uh, I think I read that somewhere. And he comes in as a potential borderline best 22 option. Probably depth at first, but with the capacity to establish himself as that best 22 player. So that one's a wait and see. But one thing I did see uh, last night, which is interesting, according to Jay Clark, whose name is really popping up lately. Jay Clark has uh, reported that Melbourne made a really uh, last ditch attempt to try and get Tom Hawkins out of Geelong. Now, apparently there's no chance of it, but Hawkins, I think it was reported that a little bit unhappy with what he was offered. You know, he's in the twilight of his career, probably underpaid when you compare it to someone like a Ben Mackay, for instance, right? But Melbourne picked up the phone, called Geelong and said, what are the odds? Now, I believe as it stands, uh, Hawkins hasn't signed a deal with Geelong, uh, but it is also considered by Clark, the same person reporting this, there's no chance he's actually going there. But it would have been interesting to contemplate Tom Hawkins in the Melbourne Football Club uh, forward line. But anyway, guys, that's probably all I got for you right now. Uh, I'm gonna now that I'm back, gonna make some other videos. I uh, got a few things in mind, and maybe it, another video for the Harley Reid stuff because it probably kills, still counts as like Eagles Corner, if you will. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate all your support lately. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.